John and I will be back for the opening kickoff with Fox NFL Sunday continues after these messages from your local station. Countdown continues. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, and it's a packed house as you look at the playoff picture. The 49ers can clinch a first round bye with a win or a giant loss, and Kansas City can clinch a playoff berth with a couple of other conditions being met. It's time, baby! It's Come time! On. Van over back deep for Tommy Thompson's kickoff. Thompson, who kicks with his right foot barefoot. It's kind of cool in Kansas City, but uh, apparently it doesn't hurt him. Van over, who is big and fast, has had some problems fumbling lately on kickoff returns, but he is dangerous. Van over in the corner of the field at about the seven. Out to almost the 30, maybe the 28. Let's look at the Kansas City offense. Led by 10-year veteran Rich Gannon, who is two and one this season as a starter. A good offensive line in front of him, Criswell and Parker the tackles, Zott and Shields the guards, and Tim Grunhard. The anchor at center, Greg Hill and Donnell Bennett will open at fullback in place of Kimball Anders, Ryzen, Dawson, and Popson are the receivers. First down, Kansas City. From their own 28, on first down, Greg Hill. Here is that number one San Francisco defense. The front four. Dolman, Stubblefield, Bryant Young, and Kevin Green. The three linebackers, Norton, Plummer, and Woodall. Plummer in the middle. And the secondary, Darnell Walker, Merton Hanks. Tim McDonald is back, and Rod Woodson. Second and seven. Hill got three on the first carry. Again. You know, it's interesting. One of the things the Kansas City Chiefs are going to do is run right at the middle. We talked about the strength of the 49er defense is right here. Here's Bryant Young. Here's Dana Stubblefield. That's the strength. Kansas City says that they're going to run right at their strength. They're going to go right up the middle, run right at those two tackles. That time, the Kansas City Chief offensive line blocked those two tackles. Third and one. Three wide receivers. Donnell Bennett gets the carry and gets the first down to the 40. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes, you know, your teams say, we're going to do this or we're going to do that. And you think, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you take, we talked about the 49er defense being so good. And to me, their strength really, really starts with Dana Stubblefield and Bryant Young. These two guys right here in the middle, it starts in there with that middle, and, and they are going to go, and they're going to run right at him. I mean, here's Bryant Young. They get him stood up, and they get right by him, and they get the first down. I think Bryant Young is one of the best defensive tackles in all of football. It's this Hill on first down, across midfield, and another first down. Stopped by Woodson. You know, the Kansas City Chiefs are one of those teams, and Marty Schottenheimer is the coach. It kind of goes into every game to prove something. You know, it's kind of like, you know, we're the underdog. These guys, you know, they've been in Super Bowls. They say they're better than us. You know, they say, you know, the NFC is better. And he makes, you know, kind of us against yep. them mentality up for every game. Plus going against the best defensive unit in football, perhaps. And I think this is a great barometer for both of these teams to see where they stand. Gannon will throw. He's chased by Green. Pass complete to Bennett, who only gets about a yard. Kansas City is doing it against a dominating San Francisco defense. Yeah, and, and you say, how did the San Francisco 49ers get where they are today? And I think it starts right there. That's the number one thing. It starts with their defense. And you looked out and how many categories within that defense that they're ranked number one. That's pretty impressive right there. 
Well, you got that many number ones by your name. That's pretty good. And they've been playing impressively. Second and long. Greg Hill gets only a couple. I think they finally figured out what they're trying to do there at that running game is run up the middle and they and they got a little more stout in there. And you and you and you're gonna see here you see these two tackles here. They're gonna start standing things up and they're gonna start plugging up here the in the middle more. You see, here they've they've won that battle on the line of scrimmage. You see, they try and get movement on that. They didn't get any movement. In fact, the back ran right into one of his own guys. On third down. They need seven for a first. Gannon going deep. Got a man incomplete. That's good coverage. Andre Risen. And that's it. Anytime you get Tyrone Drakeford at corner. Yeah. And that's what the 49ers do in nickel. And you get this situation. That's where they're going to go. If there's anyone that's susceptible to getting beaten deep, it's Tyrone Drakeford in this secondary. Andre Risen is the top receiver in the Kansas City Chiefs, so they take their best receiver against the guy that is most susceptible. And that pass was a little bit short. Now, if he throws that yeah. another six inches or so, that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown, you're right. Aguiar's punt to Oezeke. And the coverage is excellent. The Chiefs take him down led by Tony Richardson at about the 12-yard line and San Francisco will go to work from there. Feet anywhere. The 49ers road record 5 and 1, the Kansas City home record 5 and 0. Something's got to give. Garrison Hurst around the corner. Picked up good yardage. Let's look at the San Francisco offense led by Steve Young. 13-year career, 64.7 completion percentage, the highest of all time. Big offensive line in front of him, Deese, Brown, Dalman, Gogan, and Strafford. Two guards particularly big. Garrison Hurst, William Floyd, Stokes, and Owens, the wide receivers, and Brent Jones, the tight end. Hurst got six at second and four. Two tight ends set up for the 49ers. Here's Steve Young. Incomplete for Owen. Slightly behind him, but he could have caught it. Kansas City defense. Williams, Phillips, and Booker, the front three. Outstanding linebackers, Derek Thomas, Davis, Edwards, and Simmons. Acquired from the Packers, Hasty and Carter, the cornerbacks, Woods and Reggie Tongue. The secondary. Third and four. You know, at a one time, the, the strength of this defense was really the secondary, but I think this year it's changing to the strength of this Kansas City defense, maybe being the linebackers. Young catches him off balance with a quick count. And down he goes, taken down by Dan Williams. That's the thing the Chiefs wanted to do is stop the run, get him in long yardage, and then tee off on Steve Young. You know, for years we had heard, you know, you play the 49ers, you have to control Steve Young, you have to stop the pass. The Kansas City Chiefs defense is playing this game to stop the run, put Steve Young in passing situations, and make Steve Young beat him with the forward pass. Thompson back to punt, standing in his own end zone to Vanover. Back to the Chiefs. Not his best effort. Canby should be returned and is returned. Amara Vanover inside the 49er 40. And out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. A 38-yard punt. 12-yard return by Vanover. Hey, there's all kinds of yeah. action on that punt, wasn't there? There was action on the sideline. There was action on the field. They just kept playing. Marty Schottenheimer. His team's always thoroughly prepared. Look at, look, look at what they do to those gunners. You know, those outside guys on cover. They just maul them. I mean, you know, I mean, they double team and one starts and works on them, and the other goes on them, and and they just they just do about <laughs> anything within the rule. I don't even Takes know that everything within them. the rule. Yeah. It took two to separate him, plus another guy was coming in. Yeah. I think it 
Not near took three to separate them. First and ten, Kansas City at the 49 and 38. Hill knocked backwards and recovered. Hill. The they, third. Yeah, they got in there. Bryant Young got the penetration, but but Hill was able to gain a little more yardage after that. If you watch Bryant Young, he's going to be right here now. You want to keep these guys on this side line of scrimmage. When you get back in on this side, you're going to win that battle. Now watch number 97 there. You see, right there, he slithers through. Right there, he gets the penetration there. And that was the one that got Greg Hill. And Dolman finally took him down. Gain of one and a half. Here's Gannon back to throw. Over the head of Norton and Donnell Bennett. You know, that is the way to pick up a defensive yeah. line stunt, Pat. On that one, they had a defensive line stunt with Bryant Young and Chris Dolman. And, and you're going to watch Bryant Young goes down. Chris Dolman comes across here and falls over Bryant Young. Then, then if, if that happens there, you don't have to block. You see him go down? And watch Dolman goes right over the top of him. So, so they get a double dip right in the middle, which should have given Gannon a little more time to throw that one. Third and seven. Maybe eight. Gannon back to throw again. 49ers blitz. He read it. And got it outside to Andre Risen. And he's the perfect guy to get it to, Spider-Man. After he catches what he does as Spider-Man, first he twirls that ball and then does the Spider-Man. But if you're going to get the ball, who is his favorite receiver? Right now it's Andre Risen. They have, they have good protection there. They pick up the blitz, and he gets the one-on-one -on -one coverage out there against Darnell Walker. There's Darnell Walker playing man-to-man -man on Andre Risen. That's a form of that fade stop. Yeah. You know, you just start running up and stop anywhere you want to. First down at about the 17. Gannon doesn't see Kevin Green coming, but he got away from him. He gets it to Greg Hill. And Hill gets positive yardage. That good play by Gannon. You know, we talk about Steve Young being such a good runner. Rich Gannon is the same, uh, same type of thing. When, when he came out of college at Delaware, he was timing like a 4-5-40. In fact, the New England Patriots drafted him, and they were going to play him in another position. That they said, we don't know if we're going to play a running back, wide receiver, defensive back. That was enough for Gannon. He said, I'm not going to play here. I'm not going there. And he forced a trade to Minnesota. Second and five. Hill again. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this offensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, we talked about... Zott and Grunhardt and Shields inside, but even Glenn Parker and Jeff Criswell, you just watch it how they're controlling this area right here. This is where they're going to run. So these guys have to control these guys to be able to get the ball in there. Watch how they do it. You see, they take off, they catch him, they pin him. Ted Pops in the tight end gets a block also, but they didn't get any penetration. The 49er defense did. First and goal at the six. Gannon looks. Gonzalez was in the game in place of Greg Hill. And that was for whom the pass was intended. It was a local one guy, draft choice. Yeah, Tony yeah. Gonzalez went to the University of California. Came out after his junior year. Remember, he played on the basketball yeah. team at Cal that went to the NCAA. And played well. I remember watching him in basketball. Hadn't seen him play football. And I said, Geez, just watching this guy play basketball, I would draft him as a number one tight end. Marcus Allen is in the slot to the left. Touchdown, Ryzen. Watch his Spider-Man move on the goalpost he puts. He's going to go put Spider-Man right on the goalpost. Stuck to the goalpost. Andre Ryzen, you know, he takes a lot of things. They say that he's not this and he's not that, but I'll tell you what he is. He's a heck of a good football player, a hard practice player, and a great competitor. Watch him. Here he is. Anytime you get this matchup up here, here's Andre Risen here. They know that they have one-on-one -on -one and a press coverage. He just gets to the outside, gets a step, and now Gannon can lead it not over, not only up over, but to the outside. Stoyanovich extra point makes it 7-0 Kansas City. The Chiefs over the 49ers early. Central. Back at Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City 7, 49ers nothing. 
Stoyanovich about set to kick off as Andre Risen just scored for the Chiefs. That's not a bad place to go when you get Andre Risen out there in that situation with man to man coverage, and the man to man coverage is tight coverage, and it's an ex teammate. It was Darnell Walker. Yeah. You know, they played together in Atlanta, so. Andre Risen knows what he can do, could do, and should do, and did it. Stoyanovic, number 10, Chuck Levy back deep for the 49ers. 7 0 Kansas City. Levy. Flag on the play. Levy gets it out to the 40, lost the football. Chiefs are saying they have it. The 49ers are saying he was down. And the official, more importantly, is saying that he's down. The official was pointing to the ground. Gary Lane. Remember, there is a penalty, and I'm sure the penalty is going to be against the return team. A good return by Levy. Usually you don't see on on kickoff coverage when you see a penalty flag you don't see a lot of it against the coverage team. It usually is you know either holding like we see here, or clipping or, or hitting from the back or those types of things. Hitting in the back above the waist, hitting in the back below the waist, holding those kinds of things. On the return team, ten yard penalty, first down. Seven nothing Kansas City over San Francisco. Fox. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Seven nothing Kansas City leads the 49ers. Steve Young surveys the defense. That's William Floyd. And right now from McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Pat Washington is one game behind the Giants in the East. Game opening drive, play action for Rock to Larry Bowie. Bowie back first game after two out with an injury. Washington on top by touchdown. Back to Kansas City, Pat Summerall and John Madden. Back for those teams that are still involved in the playoff hunt, every game is a must game from here on in. Young, look out. Flag on the play. I think the whistle blew before the ball was snapped, Pat. And Steve Young's hurt. Yeah, and that play shouldn't have even happened. I think it has to be a penalty against the offense illegal movement because the official on this side did, did blow his whistle and he waved it off and no one stopped. Especially no one stopped from that other side that hit Steve Young from his right side, which being a left-hander is his backside. Yeah, he hit him right in the back. You're going to see Steve Young turning to our side here to his left, not feeling that pressure coming from the backside, and did he get loaded upon? Watch Anthony Davis, number 50. Comes from his backside and just unloads with his helmet right in Steve Young's back. But again, the officials stopped that play, Pat, before the ball was right. snapped. And Derek Dees also was shaken up. Number 40 on the play. Personal foul, roughing the passer after the whistle. Number 58 on the defense, 15 yards, first down. Yeah, see what they're saying is, is when. When William Floyd moved, right. then that stops because it's illegal motion, and the officials did stop the play, so there was no play at all. So Anthony Davis kept coming after the whistle blew, the whistle that stopped the play. You see, you're going to see right now the whistle is blowing. There is no play. You see, Steve Young yeah. is just standing there. Anthony Davis comes from his blind side and hits it from the back. Now, I will say the... The guy that blew the whistle, Personal the official foul, blew the official. Unnecessary roughness, not roughing the passer. First down. Yeah, because there was no passer, because there was no play, because the whistle blew before the ball was even snapped. It's Steve Young just standing there, hitting the back. That was a whipsaw. 
And Derek, Derek Dees, excuse me, Derek Dees was taken out on the play ball also. And I was saying that the that the official that blew the whistle was down here on this side. Anthony Davis came from the opposite side. And now Frank Pollock. The 49ers have had more problem at that offensive left tackle than any position yep. on their team. Yep. That's Garrison Hurst. And very little game. Stopped by Tom Barnt. Tom Barnt is an interesting story. He was an offensive lineman. He was an offensive lineman for the Chiefs, and and it, it didn't look like he was going to make it as an offensive lineman. And Gunther Cunningham was a defensive coordinator. Looked at him on defense and said, you know, if you're not going to keep him over there, if you're not going to play him over there, I will play him. So he's playing defense, a guy who started out as an offensive lineman. Second and long is it Hurst again. Out of bounds, just outside the 30, about the 32 and a half yard line. One thing that's very impressive about this Kansas City defense is is the way that they pursue oh, and gang boy, tackle. They? I mean, if you if you had to say, you know, at linebacker, you know, who has the most speed in the league, I would think would be the Kansas City Chiefs. They, they make the field look smaller. Yeah, because they just fly to it. I mean, you know, Derek Thomas for years was one of the fastest guys in football. And now Anthony Davis is faster than him, and so is Donnie Edwards, the other two linebackers. Frank Pollock now remains at left tackle. Three wide receivers. This is where Steve Young likes to try and find Brent Jones. He also likes to run and find a first down. He was hit after he slid. And no flag is thrown. Donnie Edwards. You know, got that's, the shot and got up and started to put his wave his arms in the air like I didn't do anything. Yeah, well, Steve Young, that doesn't make a lot of sense to him because they tell you if you go head first, they can tackle you. If you go feet first, supposedly you are giving up. The ball is going to be spotted right there where you go down and they can't touch you. That's feet first. And he says every time he goes feet first, Somebody. he said that's supposed to be the rule. He does it and they still come in and clobber him. First down. There's a guy who'll know where the markers are, Steve Young. This is Garrison Hurst, and he's got a blocker and some room. Hurst in the Chiefs territory. The Chiefs come out of there with the football somehow. Reggie Tung took the ball away from Garrison Hurst. And the, 40, the 49ers are saying he was down. I know it. They're all spotting. They're saying that he was down or out of bounds because it happened right there in the sideline. William Floyd better watch yep. out. Yep. You don't want to get too animated around those officials. And Carter better back away a little bit too. Yeah, but especially when you start making movements like that, you're yep. close to an official. You can't touch an official. You don't want to be making a lot of movements around him. They're having a crew conference now, you see the two officials and the referee that were involved in the play are talking to the referee. Gary the other Lane. officials are trying to keep him away. The ball is ruled down by contact. First down. Well, we can look again. Well, there's Garrison Hurst. And you see right there as he goes down, the ball comes out. Now, I don't know what down by contact has to do. The ball is already out. That's that's a poor decision there. Another reason why I think we need in instant replay. I mean, the ball is out. The ball is still in bounds. When Reggie Tung picks it up, that should be the Chiefs' ball. It's a fumble, and it's a recovery by the Chiefs. But that's not the message that takes place on the field. It's the 49er ball. Yeah, and that's why we do need instant replay. I mean, we, we have instant replay. We just have to use it. Everyone sees it. They see it here in the stadium. They see it in the luxury boxes. They see it in the coaching boxes. You see it at home. And the only guys that can't look at it are the officials. First down, San Francisco at the Chief 45. Young to J.J. Stokes inside the 25. And again, the ball came loose, but he was down. That's an interesting play. It's off that bootleg where you get the backs going one way and you try and get flow, and then you throw back against it. 
You see what you do is you get the backs coming this way to get a flow and hold this linebacker. Then you go back and you throw the ball out to this side. So you know what? The flow of the backs go to the right. Then he just stands up and knows that he can hold that linebacker to get that ball in that slant. Derek Dees is back. This is William Floyd. Just shy of the 20, about the 21. Brent Jones was the tight end. Clark had been there. Uh, you know, the, the 49ers got a couple of breaks on this drive, and one wasn't a break. You know, the penalty when um, Anthony Davis hit, hit Steve Young, that was one 10 yards, and then after Garrison Hurst fumbled, it should have been the, for, the, uh, the Chiefs' ball. And the 49ers, you know, got to keep it. So they, they do have a couple things going for them. And here. the play against Steve Young, you didn't think that should have been a penalty? No, 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 no. It should have been a penalty, but that, I mean, they got 10 yards of penalty. Right. Oh, no, I thought that should have been. I mean, there's just because an offensive Third guy moves half. doesn't give you a free Both shot. Start. Doesn't give you a free Offense. shot at the quarterback. False Number start 26. against the 49ers. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Last time it was William Floyd. This time it was his right guard, Kevin Gogan. And, this place, Arrowhead Stadium, is one of the toughest stadiums to hear in for offensive linemen. I guess it could be offensive ends or backs yeah, or anyone, but I guess. you just always jump on the side of linemen. You know, you make you don't make an excuse for William Floyd, oh bar none, but when, when big old Gogan does, you make an excuse for him and say, Oh, it's loud, oh big old Gogan can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> the handoff is to Hurst. And Garrison Hurst inside the 20. Big old Gogan got his five back on ever. that one, Pat. They did he ever? Because they said, you know, that, that, that big old Gogan moves, so now they said, well, let's give you a chance, so they run right behind Kevin Gogan. Watch him. He's a right guard. He is going to come down here, and that's going to create the hole that Garrison Hurst is going to run in. Watch Gogan come down there, get that movement there, create that hole, and get those five yards back that he just gave up. Gogan and William Floyd both got the good blocks. Young outside to Brent Jones, who has hit hard. Even the most experienced do it, do it don't they? Brent Jones uh, runs a nun yard pattern, and you know that's one of the things on third down. Brent Jones should know that. Steve Young should know it. Brent Jones has been in the league 11 years. You can't run a pattern short of the first down because if you if you get it, you still have to kick anyway. So why even throw it? It brings on the field goal unit, and it's a point well taken. Why put it in the air and take a chance of an interception if you're not going to get a first down? Anderson hits the field goal, and the 49ers get on the board. The Chiefs still lead seven to three. Central. Merry Christmas. Back at Arrowhead Stadium, what a sight this is. Sold out. Everybody dressed in red. Or just about everybody in something red. Including the cars in the parking lot, the tents. Yeah, great the tailgating team. here. Yeah. Every Everything about football on Sunday at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City is pretty doggone good. Amarek Vanover at the 7. To the 30. Brent Jones over on the sideline just caught that nun yard pass and hurt his finger in the process. And I'm sure that you know, you know Brent Jones is thinking about that, and knowing when it's third down, he he has to run his pattern to a to a depth that he's going to get a first down. You know, it seems like you're so used to seeing yeah. receivers today wearing gloves. Brent Jones doesn't wear gloves, and I don't think Ted Popson wears gloves either. Murden Hanks has got a broken finger. So that's not a glove. That's a, a that's a big old pass. <laughs> Big old cast under that bandage, too. Gannon back to Marcus Allen. And Marcus Allen for a couple, maybe three. Marcus Allen was talking about Barry Sanders yesterday and says, you know, as long as he's been in this game, Marcus Allen, he says he, he never has ceased, be, has ceased, to, ceased to be amazed by a guy like Barry Sanders well, said, the way he runs. He said uh, these guys, as Edwards leaving, 
Marcus said the people trying to tackle him are professional athletes, the best athletes in the world. Yeah, paid professionals. And they like, don't touch him. And he's, it's like trying to tackle Barry Sanders. He says it's like grabbing a bar of soap in a bathtub. This is Marcus Allen. First down. Stubblefield ran him down. Marcus wouldn't like that. Say Dana, Dana Stubblefield ran him down, would he? Seven to three. Chiefs lead. Tell the truth, Jeff, or it's bye-bye bunny. Which battery lasts over 15% longer in these camcorders? Duracell or Energizer? Energizer. Next time, pink. has arrived and McDonald's has a surprise for you. <laughs> Thanks. Come again. Just supersize any extra value meal and with America's favorite prize, get a coupon for an adult admission to Flubber at a kid's price. You've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> hey, Dad, best seats in the house. Tuesday, Fox presents a star-studded salute to six of television's most popular comic geniuses in the funniest and most touching comedy event of the year. The American Comedy Honors, Tuesday at 8, 7 Central, right here on Fox. Rod Woodson apparently just got a stinger of some kind. Yeah, it looks like if you watch here, watch his left shoulder right there as Marcus Allen makes a cut on him. Looks like he just knocks that 28 on that shoulder a little uh, askew. And then, you know, you know, could have one of those stinger things, but I'll, I'll bet he'll be back in there in the next couple plays. Word on Donnie Edwards is that he sprained his thumb and he's had to get wrapped or rewrapped. Or x-rayed. Or x-rayed. That's Marcus Allen. And there's nothing for Marcus. Marcus Allen. Marcus no. Allen is an amazing guy. Yeah, you know, is. when you think of a, a guy playing playing the game as long as Marcus Allen has at at this position and you know for 16 years and playing it so well and I know Marty Schottenheimer says yesterday that that he thinks that he's still the best short yardage and goal line runner in all of football and 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 to me those have always been the most important yeah. yards I mean you like first downs nice second downs okay but third down short yardage goal line those are the most important downs you ever have and for Marcus Allen no mention of retirement Gannon. A lot of time in the pocket as Rich Gannon is tripped up. Way too much time. Yeah. I mean, that's excellent pass protection by the Kansas City Chiefs. We talked about how this was going to be a match and a game in the trenches and all those things. Kansas City's offensive line, this group right here, is winning that battle so far. Look at the time that Gannon has. I mean, he looks to his right, he looks to his left. He even brings his head down to look and see where the pass rush is. Doesn't see anything and brings his head back up. Did you see how well they control those two tackles? Well, that's that's what they have to do. I mean, they have to control Bryant Young and Dana Stubbleville, and they're doing it both the run and the pass. Here's Allen. Close to a first down, but didn't get it. Steve Young, who took a wall up in the back earlier. He still looks a little... Uh, uh, I think I gingerly think, stepping around. I think he could because it was one of those things that again it was no play and it looked like he was hit by Anthony Davis just as he started to relax. I didn't expect a hit. Oh, and you know not only uh, didn't expect him, I mean, he couldn't couldn't feel it, didn't see it, didn't know anything about it. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting call right here. Pat Marcus Allen didn't make the first down. 
If I were Marty Schottenheimer, though, I would get a measurement to see exactly how much you need for a first down. Well, you have the best. Well, and he's getting the measurement. In fact, yeah. they aren't going yeah. to do that because that always helps in your decision. Of course, if you don't have very far to go and then you punt, it also uh, gets the fans uh, against you, too. But when you have Marcus Allen, as you mentioned earlier, see now the best in short yardage clutch situation like this. Right. Maybe you go for it. And Marty and his emotion, I think part of it is his emotion. Part of it is the fact that he likes that kind of football. And I think a little part of it is the influence that these fans have. No question about it. Maybe even a little more of the influence that the official has when he gives you this look here. You know, yeah. you only got that much to go. About a foot. Back to Marcus Allen. There's a reason he's the best on short yardage. And it's just, you know, Marcus Allen was saying yesterday on short yardage, what he tries not to do is to see ghosts, you know, to think what's going to be there before you get there, to just let it happen, and it's all about a feel. Now, you would expect that they would be going inside, and they get them all packed inside, and they just come on a flip. They flip the ball to him on the outside. He gets a good lead. And then he knows exactly where that first down marker is and gets beyond it. First down, Kansas City at the San Francisco 45. The fake is to Marcus Allen. And Gannon's pass is caught by Lake Dawson. And Dawson fights inside the 20 to about the 18. Lost his hat. I tell you, that's, that's the thing. After Marcus Allen gets in there and runs a few, and then, you, and then you get that defense anchoring, then, 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 then you can get a hold. You see, when you get that play pass and you come in here, that's going to hold this group, and then you can come in and find big holes in behind them. And that's exactly what happens. It all starts with a play pass. You see the play pass, and that affects everything. And now, and now Dawson is able to come right across the middle, and there's no defense underneath. Why? Because they went for the play fake. Right. Uh, first down. The fake handoff is Gannon rolls and it's out of bounds intended for Ryzen who dropped it but he was out of bounds anyway. You know, one of the things that the 49er defense worries about is the is 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 contained in Rich Gannon because you know we said how you know he has the speed he has the quickness and and he is one of those guys that every time he goes back to pass is as dangerous running the ball as he is throwing it. And the coaches all to to a man yesterday said to us he also makes very solid very good decisions. And Marty Schottenheimer you know in practice I watch him in practice tells him that every play. Donnell Bennett inside the 10. Stopped by Junior Bryant. They said they were going to go right at their strength that they were going to take the ball and they were going to run it right at these two guys the strength of that 49er defense. They were going to run it right at and they're doing that. They, they double them a, both. Yep, they double them both. They get just a little crease. It doesn't take a heck of a big hole. Just a little crease to boom to get that ball through there. That's exactly what Bennett does. And then after he gets through there he runs like a fullback. Which of course he is. Which of course he should run like. That's why they're paying him. That's Marcus Allen. Not much. Marcus Allen on the well, that was that, first down. That, that, that was that short yardage play. They weren't they weren't trying to get much on that. You get third down inside the 10. You want to get the first down first and then go for the touchdown. I don't know that they got the first. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they did. They did yeah, get they the did. Just changed the marker. First and goal. Watch Marcus Allen here, and you see why he's so good at this because his feet never stop. You see, even right now, you see his feet, they're still going there, driving, driving, driving to get that first down. First and goal at the seven. Chiefs already lead 7 3. Gannon back. Goes out of the pocket, and as John Madden's been saying he can run, he's knocked out of bounds at about the three. And that really slows down a pass rush. Any anytime a quarterback could run like that, then you say we got to keep them contained. We have to stay in their lanes. 
And all those are things that take away your aggressiveness. You see, Kevin Green takes an inside. And the minute that he takes an inside, Rich Gannon sees that, and he goes right outside. They knocked him out of bounds at the two. So it's second and goal at the two. And would you look if you were playing defense? For Marcus Allen to get the carry. I think this play and the next play and the play after, but they're going to come and talk about it first. It's a timeout. San Francisco call this timeout. In Kansas City, we're at Arrowhead Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Second and goal at the two, Kansas City. They've already gotten 30, 73 yards rushing today. And that's more than the 49ers average. Gannon, touchdown. Gonzalez. That was a play the offensive coordinator, Paul Hackett, called. You know, they took a timeout. They had a chance to talk about it. You see Marcus Allen again here. You give the playback. You make him hold in. Hold all this group here. Then you take your tight end and just sneak him right out there. Now watch the, the play fake. And you see here's Gonzalez right here. But watch what the play fake does. You see how it holds everyone there? Yep. Gonzalez sneaks out to the outside, and there's no defender near him. Stoyanovich makes it 14-3. to Kansas City over San Francisco. The 49ers have won 11 straight. They've got their work cut out for us. Tonight at 8, 7 central on Fox. You know, we talk about play fake all the time, and it's the quarterback, and it's also the running back. You see the quarterback fake there? Now watch Marcus Allen. He just keeps running and running and running and, like, dives like he's going for the end zone. Of course, that holds all the linebackers, and it holds that strong safety, and then you can sneak someone, once you fake that, sneak someone free in the end zone. Stoyanovich kicks off to Chuck Levy at the goal line. Levy. To the 30. Stopped by Joe Horn. We saw the play fake part of it. Now watch Tony Gonzalez here, the rookie. He starts here. Comes across in motion here, fakes a block here, and then just sneaks out into the end zone. See, so we saw the play fake part of it. Now watch Gonzalez come across. Now he's going to make a little block right here. See, boom, makes the guy play the block, and then sneaks off him free into the end zone. He did that very well, yeah. Gonzalez. In fact, they did all those things. Rich Gannon made a yeah. nice fake. Marcus Allen carried out the fake. Gonzalez made a good part of the fake by coming to a block and then getting out. Brent Jones moves over to the right side of the San Francisco offense, and this is Garrison Hurst. Hurst out of bounds at about the 35 by Reggie Tung. Did you see uh, old uh, Minuski going down there? On <laughs> you got, watch him. Here he is, number 51, one of, the, one of the great special teams players in the league. And watch what happens. When you get down there and you run that hard to get there <laughs> and you get there first and then you miss the tackle, you have to go through those gyrations. And knowing him, that's not an act. <laughs> no, it's not. A, nothing that Minuski does is an act, believe me. Minuski's just a football player. He's a special teams guy. On second down, Steve Young taken down. Fumble. The 49ers got it back. Garrison Hurst recovered they're, Young's they're fumble. Throwing, yeah, they're throwing Steve Young around like a rag doll on these things. Right, this is a, where, they, where they got him early. And here again on another, that, that was the, the penalty play. Here he scrambles and slides and still goes down. And then, of course, that last one. And, that's one of the things that Steve Mariucci has gone to a more conservative offense. He said, really, the secret behind his offense is just to keep Steve Young healthy. Young gives to Terry Kirby. Who Look only out, gets about Hogan, three. you're going to get in a fight right there. I don't know uh, if Gogan's a guy I want to get in a fight with. Yeah, but the thing is, is Gogan makes you get in fights with him. 
because Gogan Gogan plays from the time the ball snap until the whistle blows <laughs> yeah. and then a little beyond it. I still don't know if I'm the he's the guy <laughs> I want to get in the fight. Uh, you don't want to get any uh, JOPs around him, any of those jobs, you know, where you come after the play's over yeah. and jump on the pile because he'll pick you off if you do a job. Kick is blocked. The punt's blocked. Thompson's punt is blocked by the Gonzalez. And the Chiefs have it inside the 49er five. Yeah, you know, everyone was saying what a great player Tony Gonzalez is going to be. Of course, he played for Steve Mariucci, the 49ers head coach last year at the University of California. He caught a touchdown pass, and then lo and behold, he comes in and lays out. Now, that is a great athletic move. Usually, you block with two hands. Watch Tony Gonzalez come in here and just reach out with one hand, his right hand, and whap that thing down, and then go get it. It didn't look like he was really trying to block it. You know, they only sent one guy on that. Look, look, he's the only guy coming. He comes from the right side, and that looks like a basketball block. Yep. That, that's the way you block a shot in basketball. Tony Gonzalez blocked the punt. First and goal at the three. Allen standing up. The Kansas City Chiefs are taking it to the 49ers, and they're taking it to their defensive line. Yeah, yesterday all the Chiefs were saying, you know, we're not going to let these guys intimidate us. And no one in this locker room is in awe of the 49ers. And, and they really have come out in this yeah. first half and played that way. I think they've intimidated the 49ers. Well, look at this hole right here. I mean, there is no one that gets a hand on Marcus Allen. You see Ken Norton Jr., he was just standing up there and they went right by him. And that middle is the strength, or has been, of the 49er defense. Look at that. A brand new Melrose, Monday at 8, 7 Central. Marcus Allen just added on to NFL history. Rushing touchdown number 121. Let's watch the block that Dave Zott makes here. Here's Ken Norton. He's going to be standing right in the hole. Zott comes around, gets him, and hooks him right there. Norton should make this play. Because see, see, him, see him step up there? He's right in the hole. Now watch what Zott does to him right there. Hits him, holds him, turns him. No one touches Marcus Allen. Levy. Back deep for the 49ers. Diamonds to kick it off. Short kick. Bounces away from Levy, who touched it. Picked it up now. Chuck Levy. Take it down at about the 16. Things are falling apart quickly for the 49ers. Our Affleck trivia question. Which was the last team to win a Super Bowl without a 1,000-yard rusher? Got any ideas? Yeah, I would think it's probably one of the two teams playing here today. At Arrowhead? At Arrowhead, when Kansas City, when the Chiefs won Super Bowl three, I think they had a 1,000-yard rusher in Mike Garrett. I think they might have. Flag on the play. Eric Thomas is saying that Derek Deese moved on that one. The left tackle, number 63. False start. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 63. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Derek Deese. Yeah, Derek Deese was right here. And you see, again, what he has to do is he has to block Derek Thomas on the outside. And Derek Thomas got wide on him. And, and when you have to block a speed rusher, that'll happen quite a bit. Young. Pass complete to Owens. And right now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Pat and John, Carolina needs a victory to stay in the wild card hunt. Look at what the Saints are doing to him. Ray Zeller's 10-yard run. Saints on top 10-3 over Carolina. Take it back to Kansas City. Pat and John. It gets harder and harder to be able to predict what the heck is going to happen around the NFL. Young swings it out to Kirby. You know, I think one of the reasons uh, for that... Floyd, excuse me. 
I was just going to say, Pat, one of the reasons for that is is there's really no dominating teams in the league anymore. There are some good teams, and to me, that's the difference between being good and dominating. If you're a dominating team, you can have mistakes and still win. If you're a good team, if you have mistakes, you're going to lose. And as you pointed out, although the Chiefs look like they're a pretty dominating team today. They're dominating the 49ers in this first half. Kirby in the backfield. Three wide receivers. And here comes the Chief Blitz and down goes Steve Young. Not enough people left to protect. Uh, the 49ers are reverting to the, the team that started the season, not the team that's been in the middle and towards the end of this season. That's the pressure. Here's Derek Thomas. Again, we talk about a speed rusher coming against Derek Deese. He just does it. He just runs right around yep. him. I mean, Deese, at some point, you have to pop him. I mean, the guy comes and you have to give him a pop. You just can't take the ride because if you take the ride on a speed rusher, he's going to ride you right into your quarterback. He's going to leave you hitchhiking. Thompson's punt. And that's Vanover. Midfield. Flag on the play. Another flag on the play as Vanover goes out of bounds at about the 45. You know, and that's going to be one of those things where you get the gunner coming down, the, the two outside guys that can leave. The penalty happened on blocking them on the sideline. But the deal is when the, when the hat comes off, that means that a player went out of bounds. Now, if he goes out of bounds, he has to try to get back in. So if he doesn't try to get back in, it can be against the guy going down, against the gunner. If they knock him down and keep him out of bounds or lay him, then it can be against the guys that are blocking him. But there's something happening over in that side. Yeah. We don't know what it is, but we don't. You, you got a couple of heads without hats. So that's going to tell you that something happened, happened way out of bounds. Say when you get those, and and so Two that's going to be part of it. Then when you get the flag. Then there's going to be a penalty involved in it. The hat just means that it happened. It's okay. The flag means that after it happened, then something else happened that they're going to throw a flag on it. Now, after they throw the flag and the hat, what do they have left? The bean bag. Bean bag. You see right there? Oops. We used to have a shot there. We don't have it anymore. <laughs> but that thing in the in the front is a bean bag. The signal it's against the 49ers. That right there is a bean bag. So they got the flag first, then the hat, then the bean bag. What kind of beans, you know? Well, uh, no, I think they just have, you know, in the in the flag they have popcorn. Right. In the in the in the yellow flag. In fact, I carry one around with me all the time. Unpopped. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the kicking team, running out of bounds, not making an effort to come in. Number 28. By rule, that penalty is declined. Personal foul. Number 82 on the receiving team, late hit out of bounds, 15 yard penalty, first down. Okay, now watch. Here's the first part because he just gets out of bounds. They said that he didn't, he stayed out of there too long. <laughs> he's, not, he's not trying to get back. Curtis here. Buckley. That was Curtis Buckley. So then, but that doesn't mean that you can. Can take and have a personal foul too. So they take, they didn't take that one, they take the personal foul. Buckley was on the warning track. Derek Walker was the chief golf call for the personal foul. And and they, they aren't going to penalize the 49ers for it, he said. They are penalizing the Chiefs for it. They're going to take some time to think about it right now. 21 to 3. I go to work every day in a suit and a tail. <laughs> 5.08 left before the halftime. Kansas City 21. San Francisco 3. Look at the field position that Kansas City has had as opposed to what San Francisco has faced. That's one of the reasons they lead. Greg Hill. Let's go back to that Aflac trivia question again. Which was the last team to win a Super Bowl without a 1,000 yard rusher? The last team. It was these 49ers. 
1994 with Ricky Waters. Yeah, that would be a good guess because, you know, the 49ers were one of those teams that for a long time would use that short pass. That's kind of the West Coast offense yeah. where you use that short pass in, in lieu of a run. Hill wrapped up by McDonald, Tim McDonald. I think the 49er defense is going to have to get Tim McDonald more involved in the run defense because they aren't having having success with you know stopping them with that seven and that's the thing we always talk about that eight man up that eight man in the box well, of course that eighth man becomes the strong safety and when you're playing the 49ers it becomes Tim McDonald so I think on on first and second down especially you know the running type down I think we'll see more and more of Tim McDonald up around the line of scrimmage third down three wide receivers set up for Kansas City Gannon straight back this time and now straight forward Rich Gannon will get a first down before he is knocked backwards but he still gets all the way to the 45 and they'll move the sticks yeah Brian Young got penetration in the and the thing the 49ers talked about the number one thing that they had to do is to be able to contain Rich Gannon now watch right here Brian Young does get by Will Shields you see him break free right here he's gonna break free right there and that's the thing that makes Rich Gannon start to run he starts a little to his right and then no one has their lanes in the middle no there's no containment on the outside and like I said when you start worrying about lanes and containment and all those things that takes away aggressiveness and pass rush two tight ends set up Fly, uh, whistle on the play quickly it's been a long time since I've seen an, seen an offensive guard do as good a job as Dave Zott's done today. Well, you know, and, and he's a real athletic guy, and he has to be. Well, that stands. Offense, number 61, five-yard penalty, still first down. Tim Grunhard, the center. But as we, as time passes, there's Dave Zott. Now, his stance is one of the most unusual I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, he gets in a in a different type of stance to get started, but he comes out of it quickly. <laughs> but he comes out of it quickly in great positions. <laughs> Unusual. Gannon going deep for Ryzen. Comes up with a catch. What a catch by Andre Ryzen. I think Andre Ryzen is saying it's unbelievable. I can't even believe it. I'm Spider-Man. Who am I? The ball stuck to him. 45-yard game. If, I think I think you, you can do that most of the time. You know, that if you get Andre Risen, he's a heck of a competitor. He's a battler. And if you can get him man-to-man -man and just give him a little lead, he'll come up with the ball. You see, watch that right there at the end. You see that little push that he got on Rod Woodson? He got that push, and that yeah. just held Woodson back enough that gave him about a three-inch separation, and Rich Gannon throws a perfect pass. Now watch what Dave Sott does here. He's he's getting beaten here by Dana Stubberfield right there, and at the end, he's just going to leg whip him and just catch Dana Stubberfield and knock him down. That's illegal, by the way. Yep. But Not you know, if you're an old lineman, though, and a guy gets by you, you do whatever you can to keep him off your quarterback. First and goal, Kansas. Allie McBeal, Monday at the Melrose Place. Andre Risen has three catches for 69 yards and one touchdown, and Kansas City has first and goal from the five, and they have dominated things here at Arrowhead. Marcus Allen, fumble. Got it back. You know, yesterday, Carl Peterson, the general manager of the Kansas City Chiefs, was talking about Thanksgiving and so on. And he said the thing that he's most thankful for is getting Andre Risen. Yeah. You know, that he was available from the Green Bay Packers. And Andre Risen did a great job last year with the with the Packers, remember, in the Super Bowl, scoring a touchdown and everything. When they needed him, he really did come through for him. Second and goal at the five. Back when the Green Bay Packers got Andre Risen, they went undefeated from that point on. Allen again stopped at about the three. 
Now that would have been a good time for the play pass. You know they you know they did the play pass. They got the one to to Tony Gonzalez earlier. It's going to be tough to do on third down because this is really a long yardage situation. That's Paul Hacker right there the offensive coordinator who calls these plays for the Kansas City Chiefs and uh, he's he's calling some good yes, ones in is. this first half isn't he. Third and goal at the three. 45 seconds and the clock running down to halftime with Kansas City leading 21 to three. The 49ers have two timeouts but they aren't going to take it. They're just going to let the Chiefs control the clock which they did. And they took the timeout. Marty Schottenheimer has his team well prepared. Sleigh bells ring. Are you listening? In the lane. Don't forget the Dockers khakis halftime coming up with JB Terry Howe and Ronnie they're all there scores highlights it's third and goal at the three here at Arrowhead with the Chiefs already leading 21 to three two tight ends set up and now Gannon can't take another timeout he wanted to but he can't Gannon lofts it sure is Gonzalez if Darnell Walker was out there man to man they had Tony Gonzalez came in the game and he was split out left like a wide receiver the Chiefs Defense do a lot of that in the end zone number 38 ball will be placed at the one yard line first down first and goal at the one but well, here's Gonzalez at tight end lined up here They're, he's just going to run it up right here Darnell Walker is number 38 he's man to man on him Gannon just throws a ball up like a jump ball Darnell Walker hits Gonzalez before the ball even gets there. There have been a lot of questions asked this year about what is pass interference. That was pass interference. Marcus Allen. Looked like he might throw an option pass, and he does. And Popson comes down one-handed and makes the catch. The next 49er. That was the old run pass. We talk about play pass where you fake the run and the quarterback throws it. The run pass is where the running back gets the handoff, goes like he's going to run the ball, then he throws a pass. Marcus Allen looked like he was going to throw it earlier. This isn't a thing of beauty, no, although no. The, the catch by Ted Popson is. Watch Marcus Allen. He was going to throw it. He put it down. He was going to run it. Then he was going to throw it again. And he throws some popsicle up there, and Ted Popson picks it off with one hand. <laughs> this is turning into a first hand, the first half route. Popson gets the touchdown. It's the way a house smells when there's bread baking in the oven. The way mothers make sandwiches just right. It's the way we try to know each of our customers by name. Kansas City leads San Francisco. Yeah, we know what it looked like on Marcus Allen, but let's watch Ted Popson here. And the tight end who also played for the 49ers. He's running it out, and then he just looks at that thing, that jump ball. And he did get both feet in, I guess. It was awfully close, yeah, though, it wasn't was it? was very close. But there was an official looking right down the line. He dragged both feet. I don't know if they're in. I don't know. It looks like that right one is out yep. in that one. I don't know if that was a, a pass or a lob or a jump shot that Marcus Allen threw. Or it looked like the shot put, although. But whatever it was, that was his sixth career TV pass. Chuck Levy. Black and white. Why is it in black and white? I don't know. <laughs> Just because when you get too far forward, you have to take a couple steps backward, I guess. It's as good an explanation as any. Steve Young back in the pocket. Brent Jones. And he comes up calling timeout. The 49ers have one left now. Yeah, see, the 49ers right there are in a, in a position where it'd be about a 50-yard field goal. So what they'd like to do is get get one more completion because they still have a timeout and they can do it and that's what Steve Mariucci is thinking right now you don't 
Yeah, I think you try for one more completion, use your timeout, kick the field goal. Or you get in that area where it's painted Chiefs down at the end, call the end zone. Well, that's that's the other thing you can do. I mean, but do you try do you try now to take a shot at the end zone? If it's incomplete, you have to kick the field goal from here. Or do you try now to pick up another 10 yards for your field goal kicker? I would think they would try and pick up another 10 yards. Well, they have one more timeout, which they'll need to get the field goal team on the field. Young. Here comes the blitz. Get out. And Derek Thomas around the corner. Derek Thomas is raising havoc over there on that left side of the of the 49er offense. But the flag on the play must have been against Kansas City. Prior to the snap, false start. No. Offense. No play. Number 76. Please reset the game clock to 11 seconds. Kirk Strafford. Kirk Strafford, easy tackle on the other side. Kirk Strafford is right here. He's the right tackle. Derek Thomas came from the other side. Wet Strafford, I don't know. He didn't move. There's nothing wrong with that. There was nothing wrong with that. Unless they said that he wasn't up on the line of scrimmage, but Derek Thomas just blew by the blocker on the other side. Derek Thomas has been blown by Derek Deese a big part of this first half. Young whips it to Owens, and Owens fights his way down inside the 20 to about the 15 and the 49ers take a timeout now do you send your field goal team on the field or you take another shot no you seconds? send your field goal team on here they come here at intel tenderson and the field goal unit out on the field for san francisco and now kansas city takes a timeout Let him think about things a little bit. Not him, not Steve Young. You know, this is a tough one for the 49ers because I think it's a barometer. You know, everyone has said that the 49ers have a good record, but they hadn't played anyone. And everyone, you know, in the old thing about the NFC being the, the dominant conference over the AFC. And I think it's a barometer for those types of things. I mean, I think that the two best teams in the NFC are San Francisco and Green Bay right now and Denver and Kansas City in the AFC. This doesn't mean who's going to be in the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl, or any of those things, but I think it is a barometer to see where you stand in relationship to each other among the best. You know, and add some fuel, too. This is from 34 yards to those who've been saying the 49ers haven't beaten anybody. Anderson. Yes, sir. And that's probably what they'll be talking about at halftime. You know, that people are saying that, and we're showing that it's true. That's probably right. Because this has been a shocking thing, the way the, the 49ers are playing. That's the end of the first half with the score. Kansas City 28, San Francisco 6, Fox NFL 2. Just about ready to start the second half with the Chiefs leading the 49ers 28 to 6. Uh, tribute to this grump, uh, this, <laughs> this bunch, John. Well, it, that's that's one thing that we talked about earlier. It was going to be who was going to dominate whom. And in the first half, this offensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs has really dominated really the have. defensive of the of the San Francisco 49ers. You look and see that. They've rushed for 90 yards already, and they haven't allowed a sack. And then the other thing is they wanted to go right at their strength. If you look here, they've run left four times for 18 yards. Look at that middle there. They've run 14 times of Bryant Young, Dana Stubblefield, Ken Norton Jr. in that group for 47 yards and a TD. They've run four times to the right and 25 yards. And Steve Young had a tough, tough beginning. That was his first pass attempt right there. Yeah, and then and then this one was the one that was a penalty. There was no play, and he got hit from the back. And whereas the the Kansas City Chief offensive line really did dominate, I think that the defensive line of the Chiefs and their defense also dominated the offensive line of the 49ers. So in that battle, in the trenches, I think the 49ers have lost both sides of it. 
You know, in talking to the to the chief coaching staff yesterday, they were saying that they had noticed that the 49er tackles particularly had backed off the ball a little bit. And right. that's just an invitation to run right at them. And I think that, that that was the thing. The 49er tackles, they were talking about Dana Stubberfield and Bryant Young, that they weren't crowding the ball as much. And any time that anyone does play off the line, then that is an invitation, like you say, to run at them. And they've, they've done it continuously in this first half. Bouncing kick goes past one of the front men and finally is down and goes out of bounds. And the 49ers finally corral it. Chad Fan comes up with it. And so San Francisco, no return, will take over at about their own 25. Andre Risen, anytime that he's had a chance to come up or to make a, a play in that first half, he sure made it. Steve Young. See how well the 49ers have regrouped. It's the first time they've faced a challenge like this. Right, and, and one of the things that Steve Mariucci does, of course, he calls the plays. He also scripts the second half. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see his script right now. Young, outside Brent Young. Six yards. And I would bet that that script would, would be this, not only including more passing, but including more first down passing because they weren't having success on first down run nor were they having success on third and long and a lot of times or most of the time no success on first down run will equal long yardage on third down second and four Stokes goes wide to the left Owens to the right That's Garrison Hurst, and he's off to the races. Garrison Hurst all the way to the Chief 45. So far, they regrouped pretty well. It looked well, like he was did, down back the, at the line of scrimmage. Right, and the Kansas City Chiefs forgot to tackle because it looks like here's Garrison Hurst. It's a single, single back. He, you're going to see Kevin Gogan pull, and he gets a block here. Garrison Hurst is going to take it inside. Then right there, he bounces it to the outside, and there's no containment. Yeah. The containment got caught up in the wash inside, and Garrison Hurst was able to bounce it outside. Young fake to Kirby. Gets it to William Floyd, and Floyd gets across the 20. You know, what he was trying to do is that same pass that he threw earlier, but he was trying to do it deeper and get J.J. Stokes out there. It was Terrell Owens who was on the left side, and they were trying to get that flow again. Instead of throwing to Terrell Owens on a slant, they tried to get him on a post, but James Hasty was on him. In fact, James Hasty has been covering Terrell Owens today, and he was on him on that one pretty good. This time he's down here on J.J. Stokes. Two tight ends. Kirby, the ball carrier. Broke away from one, but not the second. Reggie Tung was the first guy there, and he hung on. He got hit by his own guy before he got to do his celebration. But we talked about the, the containment, and the containment is always going to come on an outside run by either the strong safety or the corner on that side. Reggie Tung got caught up on the inside on that long run by Garrison Hurst. That time, he was the outside or the contained guy. Third and seven. One lone setback, and they better keep some people in to protect Steve Young because the Chiefs are coming. And the ball is loose. I think his arm was going forward, though. It was an attempt at a pass. And you were right. They just can't do that. If they're going to protect Steve Young, they can't go with the open formations. They're going to have to keep, just like you said, they're going to have to keep someone in there. And I think one of the, the secrets to their success is protecting Steve Young. But when you open up formations like this and your protection doesn't have control, you don't have a chance. Now, if your offensive line was dominating them, you would have a chance at that type of thing. But they haven't been. They are being dominated. Gary Anderson, two for two, will try this one from 40. Plenty of distance. And the 49ers make it nine, 28 to nine. They've moved the best they've moved with the second half. Garrison Hurst got a bruised shoulder and headed for the locker room. Don't know if he'll be back or not. 
And then did you see following him was his starting right tackle, Kirk Strafford. And he looked like he was grabbing in rib area and yep. explaining to someone what was wrong with him. So Vanover. Players. Vanover gets it outside. He's got the great speed. He tripped up. Frankie Smith tripped him up. Yeah, talking about speed, Pat. Watch this. Here's, here's Derek Thomas. He was telling us yesterday, we're saying, who's the fastest guy? And he said, it depends. He said, if you put me in a three-point stance and snap the ball, I'm the fastest. Now, look what he was talking about. Here it is right here. And and and, and, and Derek D just doesn't have a chance. Oh, I mean, the just backs a blur. don't have a chance. I mean, he gets, he gets by him so quickly. And then he's coming to Steve Young's onside, the side he's trying to throw to, and he's there before Steve Young ends up his drop back. Just a blur. Stratford has a bruised rib, by the way. You heard me say perhaps that Hurst had a bad shoulder. Flag on the play as Greg Hill gets to midfield. But a penalty marker down, and that is probably going to be holding against Kansas City. Greg Hill was saying that he probably plays less snaps. Holding, Holding. offense, offense. number 68, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Will Shields is number 68. But he probably plays less snaps than any starting running back in the league. Will Shields is the, is the right guard there, and you see him hold right there. You see he just got a, a thing there, and one of the ways to block Bryant Young is to hold him. Although Will Shields has been doing an excellent job really today has. against Bryant Young. First and 20. Bright sunshine in Kansas City now. Flag, whistle, no flag. Yep. Or is there a flag? Yes, there yeah, is. There's flags and whistles. And usually, again, when the, when the ball is stopped, when they don't snap the ball, it's on the offense. Anytime the... Flags are down, whistles blow, and stop the play. False start. Offense, number 62, five-yard penalty, still first down. Glenn Parker, the right tackle. Yep, there it is right there. The play before it was Will Shields. Yep, you see that? Just that little rocking movement. And again, it's usually when you're going to block a speed rusher, you know, when you have a, a Kevin Green on you, when you have a Derek Thomas on you, they tend to rock back on passes a little. First and 25. Here's Gannon back to throw. Pressure from Young. But Gannon has time and finds his receiver, Andre Risen. Yeah, we were talking about how this Kansas City offensive line has been has been dominating. You know, we're talking about the run, but also on pass protection. When mm -hmm. Rich Gannon has gone back there, he's had time to pass today. And watch his protection here. You see, I mean, he's getting time. He can look, look. He finds a lane that he can step up. He's real good at that. Buy a little more time. Let his receiver get open. Don't you think a uh, defensive pass rusher will become more cautious when you get a guy like Gannon back well, there? That's exactly what's happening to him. You know, they're being told, you know, keep your containment and stay in your lanes. They're not aggressive. Second and six, Greg Hill. Broke about four tackles and got a Kansas City first down. Remember, it was first and 25. And, and this is the thing when you when you start losing your aggressiveness in here and up front then everything bad is going to happen to you You don't have the pass rush because you're worried about lanes. You don't you, you don't tackle well. You're not aggressive. You're not making things happen. And then guys like Greg Hill are making runs like that against you. And I think Rich Gannon has done a lot to take away the aggressiveness of this 49er defense. Chiefs have 100 yards even. The only other team to come close to that was Tampa Bay in the first game of the year. But they are, you know, you know, this is the thing that Marty Schottenheimer was was saying that was interesting yesterday. He said, have the 49ers ever been behind all season by more than seven points? He asked us the question. Yeah. Of course, he already knew the answer. Of course he did. And he said it would be interesting to see them have to play from behind. He said, we know how they play from being even or being ahead. But it would it be interesting to see how they would play from behind and you know like he knew what the heck was going to happen today. Well you got to protect Steve Young. That's the first thing. Pass was juggled and intercepted. That's Darnell Walker. Walker is still on his feet out to the 15. 
And the 49ers will take over there. That was great coverage by Darnell Walker. He was man to man on Lake Dawson, and he handled that part. So the 49ers will take over. Excuse me. Oh, he's beating Lake Dawson. 413 Hope Street, Thursday at 9, 8 Central. Back at Arrowhead Stadium, Pat Summerall with John Madden, 28-9 now. 49ers have the ball at their own 15. Steve Young has a lone setback, Terry Kirby. Time, that's to Stokes. For a report right now, let's send you down to Pam Oliver. Well, Pat, I was outside the 49ers locker room. As you know, Garrison Hurst with that bruised right shoulder. We took him, they took him in for what we believe to be x-rays. We'll keep you posted on his return. Okay, Pam, thank you very much. Steve Young's completed pass is a couple of yards, that's all. We also saw Kirk Strafford go in with him. Kirk Strafford came back out, and he's in the lineup now. He ran out of the locker room, and he ran right into the huddle. He has bruised ribs. Kirby is on the move. Young gets it to Kirby. That was sort of a moving attempt at a screen. Uh, the thing is, is, is on a screen, you kind of want to let the defense go, but you want to let him go a little later. And he got penetration right away, and he had to do something. He wanted to, to throw the screen. He had to throw the screen before it had a chance to develop. You know, and again, that's Derek Thomas. I mean, Derek Thomas... If you say that they've had one thorn in their side, Derek Thomas has been the thorn in the side of the 49ers all day, and he's right here now. That's more like a railroad spike <laughs> than a thorn. Big old spike. Huh? Pass is incomplete. A flag on the play. Terrell Owens almost got the rebound. Yeah, the ball was knocked in the air. Really the one of the best defensive backs in football is James Hasty. He's one of the most physical. That was Hasty on Terrell Owens. Holding on the defense, number 59, five yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Donnie Edwards. Yeah, you're going to see Donnie Edwards is here. He's a linebacker on the on the slot out there, and you're going to see him hold right there. You see him? He just grabs and holds on now. Again, he can he can hit the guy, but he has to get his hands off him. him. Yeah. He can chug him within that five yard area, but he can't just hold on. A little break for the 49ers. First down, automatic. And here's Steve Young on first down. Gets it to William Floyd, and Floyd stays on his feet. I'll tell you, Derek Williams is getting. I mean, Derek Deese is getting killed over there on this side. That yep. last one. It was Williams, Dan Williams, number 92. He just he just kind of ran right by him. He took an inside move on him, and and here's D. Here he's a left tackle. Here's Williams. He just takes an inside move, and no one even hits him. I mean, you, you have to have better pass protection than that. I mean, he just runs right inside, and and that's making Steve Young throw when he's not ready to, or throw when he doesn't want to. Kirby. That's it. Should be enough for a 49er first down. A spinning move by Terry Kirby. Well, Vaughn Booker was in that backfield, and Kirby gave that first spin. You usually yeah. don't see a, a, a spin that quickly. But watch, watch Kirby. He's going to come in there. Booker's right there. You see him? He has a penetration. Yeah. Kirby gives him a spinner. Booker just, Booker just goes down to all fours. So what in the heck happened? <laughs> I was in there all of a sudden. Maybe I closed my eyes and couldn't find him. He is more of a dervish. Here's Young. Flag is thrown as J.J. Stokes makes the catch and carries the defender with him about 10 yards. That's one of the things that Steve Young has been talking about with these two receivers. He has J.J. Stokes and Terrell Owens. They're so big that, that it, he doesn't have to lead him. He just has to throw the ball and let them outbody the other guy. Pass interference, defense, number 40. Penalties declined. The catch is good. First Hasty, down. and watch this. Here's J.J. Stokes, and again, he's he's so big. I mean, both the receivers are so big and strong. You see right there is the, is the interference, and then the other interference. 
But J.J. Stokes still catches yeah. the perfect throw by Steve Young. And then Hasty can't get him down. Young passes too far for Owens and intercepted by Dale Carter. I think he had to hurry the throw. Well, because Carter, Carter was back there just playing zone, and he overthrows that one. Watch Carter here. He's playing deep all the way. He's reading the quarterback deep, deep, stay as deep as the deepest. He reads the quarterback. The ball was overthrown. It goes right to Carter. Steve Young was under pressure. Event of the year, the American Comedy Honors Tuesday. Six and a half minutes left in the third quarter, 28 to nine, Kansas City leaving, a leading. They might be leaving. Attendance today, 77,535. Sell out. Donnell Bennett gets the carry. I don't think anyone's gonna be leaving. I nope. think when you look at the weather, the sun's coming out now. These people love their Chiefs and Love to come to these games and tailgate. No one's going to leave anywhere. Well, I know somebody's going to leave. Well, we're going to leave you. after the game. Yeah, <laughs> go back to California. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. You know, you, you talk about why teams are good and why organizations are good. And a big statistic is turnover. And that's one of the things that the Kansas City Chiefs have always been good at. And so have the 49ers. Here's Gannon. In the end zone, Chase. That's his top. Gonzalez makes the reception for a McDonald's game break. Let's return to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Had Carolina looked as if it was trying to get back in the ball game, attempting this 26-yard field goal. But take a look at the inspired Saints. Blocked that field goal. Kerry Collins out with a concussion, knocked out in the second quarter. Woes are continuing for Carolina. Saints on top by 10. Pat Summerall and John Madden. Kansas City and San Francisco with Kansas City dominating things from the outset. It's back to Donnell Bennett. And Bennett. You know, we talked about how the how that offensive line of the Chiefs have been controlling the defensive line of the 49ers, but they're also controlling the linebackers. If you notice that you haven't heard many tackles by by Ken Norton Jr. or by, by Gary Plummer or Lee Woodall, they're also getting these guys. I mean, you know, it's not only the front group, but watch how they try and get penetration and they pick them off, knock them down, and then get to the outside. So it's not only that they're dominating the front four and the defensive line, but they're also on those linebackers. These 49er linebackers haven't made a lot of plays. All three of them were looking down at the ball carrier after the tackle had been made on the last play. And this is a thing, you know, we talked about earlier that if you're going to get that eighth guy up there, it's going to have to be Tim McDonald. And I think he's going to have to get more involved in the run. And you see here Ken Norton trying to get in there, but they're picking him off all yeah. the time. That time he was able to get in there, get picked off, and then get back. Third and about a foot. And I would expect that Tim McDonald, like I said, would be right up there at or near the line of scrimmage, which he is. Marcus Allen's the deep back. Marcus is close, but very close. He didn't need much. In fact, he ran right, right by Tim McDonald. They had Tim McDonald up there trying to guess that hole. He guessed the right hole, and Marcus Allen ran right by him. And they're going to measure to see if he did indeed make it. Watch over here. You see that they got the extra guy over there in the left side. Here's Tim McDonald. He's coming through free. And I think that I think that Marcus Allen just felt it. Know mm -hmm. that McDonald was there and just had to tighten up a little because of it. First down. Tighten up a little and then the stretch out at the end to get that first down. Got it by about the length of the ball. But he got it. Marty Schottenheimer is one of those guys that uses a lot of players. And mm -hmm. he said one of the reasons that when he was a player, he was a career backup. And he said, as a career backup, you always want to get in the game and you don't get in there. So he tries to create a position or a role 
for all his players, so he really doesn't have, quote, backup. Cannon, play fake, rolls out, incomplete. Tended for Ryzen. Had to come back for the ball. You know, Gannon really looks comfortable back yep. there today. You know, we know that Elvis Gerbach was the starting quarterback here for the Kansas City Chiefs, and Rich Gannon was a backup, and he's come in here in the in the last three games. There's Elvis Gerbach right there. He came over from the 49ers to Kansas City, has a broken collarbone. But Gannon is, you know, he, I mean, he's an 11-year veteran, so, you know, he's been around, but... He's not jumpy at all. No. He looks very, very calm and very comfortable. And as Marty kept saying yesterday, he makes very good decisions. That's Marcus Allen for about six. You know, I think that, you know, just talking about Marty Schottenheimer and, and good coaches and guys that have good programs, I think you can't do a football game today without mentioning Eddie Robinson. One of the all-time great coaches on any level. Won more games than any coach. Coached his last game yesterday, and doggone, it's not going to be the same. No. Nope. Think of all the players and all the people's lives that, that he affected. And to see that come to an end, that we're all going to miss him in football. And affected in a positive way. Here's Gannon. And a receiver, Ryzen, fell down. Gannon fired it over his head. This is going to fall down. Fans? It's going to go over his head. Right. <laughs> yeah. And if it goes underneath, <laughs> then you have a real story. But the fans wanted a, a pass interference, and they were saying that, that Darnell Walker hit him when the ball was in the air. In fact, Andre Risen thought that, too. Yeah. But they're letting him get away with a lot more of that stuff this year than they ever have in the past. Aguiar back to punt. The way is the K back deep for San Francisco. I kick. Way is the K. Has it fall on the ground. He got it back. Twenty-eight to nine. Kansas City. 226 left to play in the third quarter at Arrowhead Stadium. Steve Young and the 49ers trailing 28 to 9. Brent Jones adjusts the position. Young again under pressure. You know, I think unless they give Derek D some, yeah, they some got help you. over there, or at least put a tight end over there. They started a tight end and then put him in motion, but but, but Derek Deese all by himself it just can't handle Derek Thomas. I mean, they got to give him either some help here to chip or a back or to do something because he just runs right by him, and he's not going to give Steve Young any time at all. I mean, he's Steve quick. Young is going to have to kind of fade to his right away from Derek Thomas and get rid of the ball quicker than he wants to. They got a tight end over here this time. That's smart. Didn't help much. No, nope, it didn't help at all. But the guy has to, the guy has to block him. I mean, the guy has to bump him or chip him or do something. I mean, just lining up there isn't going to do. All that does, all that does is take Derek, uh, 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 take the the, the uh, outside guy out wider. Now, he wasn't even in the picture with Derek Thomas. All that does is when he lines up in the tight end, it just puts Derek Thomas out there wider. But Derek D still has to block him. Fourth sack of Steve Young by this Kansas City defense. And the havoc created for the most part by Derek Thomas. Third and 15. They're only one out of six. And here comes Thomas around the corner. Young steps up. Gets the ball to Owens. That's short of a first down. Steve Young buckled again. Well, you know, he, he's saying there that he's all right. But you know that he's not going to be all right. I mean, he's just been... Every time that he goes back there, there's someone... Either hitting him as he throws the ball, like Anthony Davis did that time, or or hitting him right as he throws it, or right before he throws it, or or while he's throwing it. Whatever happened to him then was on his throwing hand. Probably hit a helmet. Probably. That happens more often than you think. 
Vanover will let this one bounce. It goes out of bounds. The Chiefs will take over at their own 42 yard line. A minute to go in the third quarter. Kansas City leading 20. An all new Allie McBeal, Monday at the Melrose Place. There's Marty Schottenheimer leading cheers on the sideline, challenging on the sideline. That's one thing that he does is, you know, we were talking about getting players in the game, rotating guys, everyone has a role, but also keeping every player in the game the whole 60 minutes. McDonald sneaked up on the weak side. That's Marcus Allen for nothing. Look at this 49er defense. Has it been a dominating defense? You see over on the right side, their NFL ranks. They were all the things they were number one in. But look, points allowed today, 28 points allowed. Today, 125 rush yards allowed. And today, one rush touchdown allowed. So the things that they've been dominating in and uh, very good at, they aren't real good at today. And the Chiefs have a lot to do with that. Second and seven. Rich Gannon has gone all the way at quarterback, and he's back to throw right now. Pass is caught by Lake Dawson for a Kansas City first down. Lake Dawson got up and gave Darnell Walker a little push because the last time they threw to Lake Dawson, it was that up where Darnell Walker really beat Lake Dawson, and he got the interception. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score, Kansas City 28. San Francisco 9, Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Back at Arrowhead Stadium, Chiefs leading the 49ers 28 to 9. Word on Garrison Hurst, that's Chris Dolman. Word on Garrison Hurst is that he has a cracked bone, cracked collarbone. And will not be back. That's a big loss for San Francisco. <laughs> You know, the thing about Marcus Allen, he not only runs and has a good feel, but, but he still runs with power. Yeah. I remember when the Raiders first drafted Marcus Allen. It was my first year out of coaching, and, and I went up there to watch him practice in training camp, and two of my old guys, Art Shell and Gene Upshaw, came over to me and said, boy, Coach, you'd really love this Marcus Allen. He said he's a great blocker, and which you know, I've always thought that a running back has to do. Has he changed much since then? No, no, he hasn't. I mean, Marcus Allen has always been a very good blocker and a tough running back. No running back this time as Gannon gets it out to Vanover. Vanover gets to the 30-yard line before he's wrestled backwards by Ken Norton, Jr. Yeah, that's a little different play. You usually don't see a, a screen to a wide receiver. Yep. Most of the time, we think about screens. It's to a running back. That time they put Vanover out and then they throw a screen to him. And you see he's he's out here. He's he's the outside receiver. And then and then they're gonna throw the screen out here. The real quick pass, you see him stop, then they and then they get their line out in front to make the screen. But the line didn't get out there and Vanover didn't get back inside. Vanover is the man in motion on first down. Gannon. Fake to Allen. Looks deep. Incomplete. For a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Pat and John, the only offensive spark for Carolina today has been Fred Lane. Take a look at the second effort right here. 160 yards on the day. Carolina's back in it, trailing 13-10 as Fred Lane does the kick worm. Let's kick it back to Pat and John. And it's second and 10 at Arrowhead. The Chiefs leading. Second and 10, Kansas City has the ball at the 30. Oh, Fred Lane from Lane. Yep. Lane from Lane. Please, please. Pitches back to Bennett. Woo. Met head on at the line of scrimmage by Gary Plummer. <laughs> that was a collision. You see Plummer, in fact, he almost got that decal on the left side. See that SF on the left side? <laughs> yeah. He hit him so hard, he almost knocked that decal off. Gary Plummer's always been one of those guys, if he can get to you, he's going to hit you. 
They watch him number 50 here. You go, you go, you square up, you square up, Ooh. and then you unload. That's when you know that's you a made collision. a good. Yeah, yeah. That, that's when you know you had a good collision when the guy goes back to where he came from. Third and ten. Three wide receivers. 49ers are blitzing. Uh, in the corner of the end zone. That is a touchdown. Andre Risen. What a catch by Risen to salt it further away for Kansas City. He still has to get to the goalpost, I think. Yeah. Well, stop for congratulations. Oh, now, here he goes. Better man. We <laughs> have to get there. Watch him. He's the outside receiver there, and he runs a little stop and go on Tyrone Drakeford. And then again, it just becomes yep. a jump ball. And, and, and he's the type of guy that if you give him a chance, he's so competitive, he's going to come up with it most of the time. Extra point is good. Five catches, two touchdowns, 117 yards for Rise. Thirty-five to nine with 12.40 left to play. And Stojanovic set to kick off to Chuck Levy. That was Andre Risen, who has two touchdowns today. Short kick for Levy to handle at the eight. And he is tripped up and lost the ball. Joe Horn. Joe Horn's the fastest guy in this team. He's a he's listed as a wide receiver and a defensive back. Played a couple years in Canada. And like I said, he's a special teams guy, but he's the fastest guy on the team. And sometimes the Chiefs will just put him in to run it up. That time he come flying down the field. <laughs> Uh, you see Rich Gannon there who was throwing three touchdown passes today, but he's really found his open guy. Throwing to Andre Risen is a good thing, but he's also had great pass protection by that offensive line. He really has. That offensive line, I think if you had to look for a key, they'd be the key. Yeah, because they controlled and dominated the whole game. Steve Young has complete to Owens, dragged down by Hasty. Not many yards. You know, it's going to be interesting. You talked earlier how Jerry Rice was out here before the game, and and he really looked good. In fact, yeah. he felt he felt yesterday that he could play in today's game. His target is the Denver Broncos, December 15th. But he was feeling so good today. He was making cuts and stuff. 49ers go no huddle. Young gets the ball to Owens, and Owens gets to the 40. There is Jerry Rice. Flag on the play. As Owen. The Chiefs are saying, obviously, that it's against San Francisco. Anthony Davis was pointing that way. Looks like this. Ray Brown is trying to control Terrell Owen. Seems like there's been a lot of crew conferences today, huh? Everybody has uh, an opinion. Gary this Lane. This is one that counts. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 81. Well, no one's after he caught the ball. First down. Hey, you see, he gets he gets the ball here, and then and then I think he gives a little kick there. See what happens is is they wouldn't let him up, so he just gave a couple of kicks to Jerome Woods there. Woods had him down and was he holding him on up. him, and 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 Terrell Owens was just trying to kick out of it. That's that's a little picky. I don't yeah. I don't think there's a, you know I mean if someone kicks someone or does something like that that's a penalty and they ought to throw him out of the game. But just he was just trying to kick out of a hole. That wasn't right. There's Jerry Rice. Uh, that has been amazing as a player for so many years. And, one of the hardest working, most dedicated players I've ever known. And then he's Nobody taking that works. same approach yeah. to rehab. Nobody works off season through in this rehab. Yeah, we just, had, just staying in shape. Yeah, we had some pictures. He was out here with the backup quarterback, Jim Druckenmiller, and he was out here in the pregame warm up running some ops. 
And then the last thing you do when you really know that you're okay is when you start making cuts. And he was making cuts out here this, this morning. Second and three. After the penalty. Stokes, first down. This is before the game. That's Marquez Pope. Yeah, and you see, I mean, he's not only... The first thing you do is you jog, and you start to run straight ahead and catch. Then the last thing you do is you make cuts. Lieutenant for William Floyd, as again... Here's a cut. Yeah, watch Jerry Rice here making these cuts. I mean, he's just starting out to do this, but this is usually the last thing in your rehab before you start to practice. In fact, Jerry Rice is going to put on pads and start practicing next week with the 49ers. And you say, well, why is he so important? You just look at all those things right there. And <laughs> look at the there's figures. the answer yeah. if you ever had the question. Second and ten. Chiefs show him blitz, and here they come off the corners, and Young gets it to Owen. Owens to the 42, stopped by McMillan, Mark McMillan. I think well, that I think that Terrell Owens is going to be the next Jerry Rice in the 49. He's not going to be as good as Jerry Rice as like Jerry Rice, but he's going to be the go-to wide receiver of the 49ers. The big, future. big, strong guy, third and four. Young to throw. Has time to Floyd, but not enough for a first down. And, and, I, and I think Steve Young is saying, huddle up again, huddle up, that they know that, that they're going to go for it on fourth down. That's another example we saw earlier on third down where Brent Jones left the pattern short. William Floyd did the same thing on that one. Still over 10 minutes left to play. And when you're down 35 to 9, you, you need a whole bunch of scores in those 10 minutes. Right. And you're up against a tough defensive unit. And a tough crowd. Owens, the man in motion. Some confusion. Steve Young is knocked backwards and goes down. No flags. And the Chiefs will take over. I think part of that confusion is the crowd I was talking about. Steve Young is really taking a beating today. Yeah, he's having and a difficult just, time standing up. You can just tell his body language is, is, is saying that there's a lot of aches and pains and and whatever in that body and that's been administered by this Kansas City Chiefs and the the 49ers haven't gotten anything going for them. I mean they haven't gotten good pass protection. They haven't been able to run the ball. They don't have Garrison Hurst. He was just saying yesterday how good he felt at this point in the season. I think John if I had <laughs> to fly home on that I'd go on the bus with you. I don't, I don't think that I would ever get up in anything like that. I don't even know what that is. What would you call that? It looks like a kite. The kite? I mean, the I kite's know. up there, but what's this down here? What is that? I mean, the guy's, the guy's flying. It looks like an airplane with a parachute on it. This is Greg Hill. Taking out of bounds. Oh, action, action down there action. in the sideline. And Marty's right in the middle of it. WWF. Or they shot what's going to happen there. Where's Kevin Green? He'll jump in. Greg Hill, Merton Hanks has a cast on his thing. Foreign object hidden somewhere. That's it. Any anytime you have that, you always have to look for foreign objects, and he has a foreign object. Look what Steve Young today has had 27 pass plays. On those pass plays, he's been sacked four times, hurried 14 times. And he's been hit 11 times. So this has been a very, very physical game. And Steve Young has been on the losing end of the physical part. Second down. Hill. Surge over the right side. Gets about three yards. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League. is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Kansas City Chiefs and the NFL is prohibited. I guess I can understand that. Well, yeah, but I mean, I've always thought it was, you know, like the, the reindeer yeah. and, and, and a sleigh and stuff. <laughs> Lo and behold, there's, 
A new Santa Madden Cruiser. Claus, a new Madden Cruiser. <laughs> no, no, there'll never be a Cruiser no. that'll go up there, yep. nor will there be a Madden that'll go up there. He went down kind of fast, didn't he? Gannon, Chase, throws incomplete. The pass is incomplete. Gonzalez, the intended receiver. Yeah, there's Mrs. Santa Claus. She let Santa Claus go up. And she didn't go up in it. No, 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 no. Santa Claus takes care of all the stuff. I mean, he's looking around to see who's been naughty and who's been nice from above. And then Mrs. Santa Claus, she's just trying to get her sign straightened out. The girls. The girls okay. were waiting for that chance. Yeah, and then the, they were. Lo and behold, here's their chance. Aguiar back deep to punt. Interesting to see if Steve Young comes back. Away is the case. Says get away from it. Takes a Kansas City bounce. To the two. I think you have your answer. Not coming back. And my friends think I'm lucky. I just think I'm fast. 35 to 9 at Arrowhead. Eight and a half minutes left to play. Kansas, uh, Kansas City has been in command from the beginning. And they have the 49ers backed up in their own end zone again. With their backup quarterback in there now, Jeff Brom. Steve Young through for the day. That's two points. And two more points for Kansas City. There's a 49er down, down in the, the end, end zone. zone. It right. looks like Kevin Gogan holding his left knee. Boy, the 49ers have had their woes today. Haven't they, though? They've already lost Garrison Hurst. Uh, Kevin Gogan. We know that Steve Young has taken a real beating today. Steve Young, one of the first guys out there to check on Kevin Gogan. Gogan. A big loss and a big person down in the end zone. They are guardian angels on wheels. Gogan, he was the injured 49er. He's right here. And it looks like he just hyperextends his knee because he doesn't really get hit or anything. It's right, right there. When he put his left foot down, you could just kind of see his knee buckle. Yep. That's exactly when it happened. And you can tell how popular Kevin Gogan is because there must have been 10 49er players ran out on the field and stood around him while they were working on him. Safety for Kansas City. And Tommy Thompson will punt it to Vanover from the 20. And a flag on the play. Looking at Gogan Safety over on the sideline. Out of bounds. The ball will be placed 30 yards from the spot of the kick at the 50 yard line. First down. Tonight, the X Files captures the early feel of classic horror films with mad scientists and angry mob. It's a special black and white presentation of the X Files tonight at 9, 8 Central on Fox. He's on that. The. Uh... We come back and we're in black yeah. and white. What the heck happened? We got knocked right out of color into black and white. You never know who's running this thing. At but midfield. What happened after the safety, the 49ers fouled up their free kick. They had a free kick and then and then it went out of bounds. So now it, it, it's 30 yards from the free kick position. So the Kansas City Chiefs started in the 50. Donnell Bennett. Now we finally got control back. We got we it back from the X Files. Huh? Yeah, well, there was that deal when you get too far forward, take a couple steps back. The X Files did, and we got too far forward, so we took a couple steps back. Throwback. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stenner and directed by Sandy Grossman. Associate directors Mike Roy, broadcast associates Fran Mars and Charles McDonald, technical producer Bob Muller. Studio is produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. Senior producers Bill Brown and 
the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. The handoff is to Greg Hill. Greg Hill. Yeah, we talked about the pressure that Steve Young had, and you look at, at, at Rich Gannon, he hasn't had that. You see, he's had 22 pass plays, he's had no sacks, he's been hurried five times, and he's only been hit one time. Of course, a lot of that was his offensive line, a lot of that was he had a pretty good running game going, and a lot of that was his running himself. It's going to be interesting how the 49ers, you know, again, having the best record in the NFC. It's going to be interesting to see if in the NFL. It's going to be interesting the to NFL, see how they yeah. bounce back after this. Greg Hill bounced over his left tackle and picked up a couple of yards. Because it's going to be hard to say that it's a meaningless game. I mean, you got to, you know, approach every game as a football game. And like I said, it is a barometer, you know, because they said that. You know, that they haven't played anyone while well, they're playing someone today. And then uh, you look what happened, and now they're going to have to see, well, let's see if we can go and play well against someone that's pretty good. Because they didn't do it here today at Arrowhead. Minnesota next week in San Francisco. And then they have Denver the week after that. So, so they do have some barometers, some more barometers out there. Greg Hill again chased into the backfield. Brad Young got the penetration you know Andre Risen had a big day today and he was he was so happy we were talking to him yesterday about being here at, at Kansas City and, and you know only Andre Risen but you know the first thing that he did when when he signed with the Kansas City Chiefs he got a, a tattoo on his neck a four leaf clover it's on the other side it's on his right it's, it's on the right neck and he went out he went out he on said the to right. sell him on the right, well, you got a left neck and a right neck. Here's your left neck. You the other do. side would be your right neck. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, on his right neck, he got a four-leaf clover for good luck. So only Andre Risen. You know, I just signed with the Chiefs. What are you going to do? I'm going to go get a tattoo on my neck. My right neck. My right neck. Well, he had to say, you know, I want a, I want a four-leaf clover on my neck. And they had to say, which one? And he'd say, my right. Fourth down. I'll tell you, forget the four-leaf clover and the and the tattoo. Look what Andre Risen did today. I've always I've always respected Andre Risen as a great receiver. I, I I think that you know he's had some raps on you know and this and that. But as far as a worker and a football player, this guy can be supreme. And he can make some things happen. Aguiar's kick. Going to be down inside the five. Oh, Louis Aguiar is having a heck of a day. Yeah. You, know, you know how Louis Aguiar got started as a kicker? He's from Livermore, California, which is just outside of San Francisco. He got in a, one of those kicking contests at halftime punt at pass. Candlestick Park. Punt, punt passing. Yep, he won it there, then, and then that got him his first shot. The Prime Stars Skate International Champion Series continues with the pairs competition from France. Plus exhibition performances from world champion Elvis Stoiko and U.S. Olympic hopefuls Tara Lipinski and Michelle Kwan. Following football. The Chiefs will be sorry this one's over. Here is Jeff Brom giving to Kirby. And Kirby gets out past the five. As you thought when we looked at the replay. Kevin Gogan has a hyperextended left knee, will not return. Milstead has taken his place. There go Kevin Gogan, one of the good guys. Yep. Good player, and you hate to see anyone get down like that, but it, it doesn't sound like a bad one if there's anything good in it. <laughs> that makes sense. Kirby again. Gets a little room, gets out to about the 15 where he's knocked out of bounds. Next week, it's a big game doubleheader weekend on Fox. It all starts with America's most watched pregame show. Then catch two key NFC East matchups as the Giants take on the Eagles, followed by the Redskins as they clash with the Cardinals. 
Plus other regional action coverage begins at noon Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific, right here on Fox. Check your local listings. From deep, Owens, no flag. Oh, oh, there's an action down there. There's yeah. a fight down there. He's, that was, Simmons was just standing there. Kirk Scrafford came and knocked him off. Wayne Simmons is number 56. He's the linebacker that, that they... Holy moly. Yeah. Stratford saw something he didn't like, and he came running across the, f the field, and he just leveled. He just leveled old Wayne Simmons. Wayne Simmons is what he saw he didn't like. I know, and Wayne Simmons must have been holding someone or doing something because Scrafford took a about a 20-yard run Personal at Simmons. Foul, unnecessary roughness, number 76 on the offense, half the distance to the goal line, still first down. That took place uh, well after Kirby had run the ball out of bounds and gotten the first down. So it'll still be first down. Those offensive linemen, you know, they, they keep a watch on stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, and they're always looking and seeing what's going on, you know, and feeling. And then when they see something they don't like, then boom, they take off to protect their guys. And that's what, that's what Strafford did. Jeff Brown, the quarterback. Pass is picked off. Mark McMillan with a dive into the end zone, and the Chiefs add to their lead. Little five foot seven, 148 pound Mark McMillan. He got a jump on that one, got that interception, and dove into the end zone. Look at him. He's, he's, he's getting himself all pumped up. All his life, he's been told he's too small. He's got a ways to go to get yeah. pumped up. No, no, but they told him he was too small in high school, too small in junior college, too small in Alabama, too small for the pros. So anytime he ever makes a play, he gives that thing. You know, I'll show you how small I am. Mark McMillan. Watch him get the jump here. You see, he was looking in at the quarterback. Then he looked. And he got a good jump. Terrell Owens kind of did a sloppy pattern there. I mean, I mean, you got to do that. You got to get up there and turn around. He just did it slowly. McMillan beat him to the ball. Stoyanovich for the extra point to make it 44 to 9. And it does. And now this is an officially a route. 7 Central right here on Fox. You know, right here on Fox right now, we have a heck of a scene. You know, a week ago we were in, in Green Bay, and you know how all the fans stayed there, and here they are, the same thing here. We were talking about that tattoo on the right neck. There's Andre Risen's four-leaf clover. First thing, now, now, how do you do that? I mean, how do you go in and say, okay, put it right there, and then sit there while they do it? Gotta hurt. Yeah, but when someone said that to him, he didn't even flinch. He just didn't even answer it like... What are you talking about it hurt? I mean, anyone that gets tattoos on their neck doesn't worry about hurting. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Chuck Levy with another chance to return. Dana Hughes knocked him out of bounds. Some barbecue outside, and they do a number here. Yeah, they're the best. I mean, you know, when you think of, of Kansas City, you think of the Chiefs and you think of barbecue and and you think of barbecue ribs and 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 they got it I mean they got big old meats they got burgers you, you don't handle that with your hands now you get a fork oh no, yeah yeah we, no they I mean the linemen handle it with their hands that was <laughs> a lineman got, cooking barbecue a, yeah a special brush there they got the band out there yeah. they're celebrating they got everything going here in fact, talking about barbecue, Otis Taylor, remember the sure. great wide receiver Boy, for the Kansas City Chiefs? Yeah. He brought us some barbecue up here in the booth. Big, big tray. Good looking tray. Thanks, yeah. Otis. Yeah, we did, a, we did a job on that at halftime, huh? Terry Kirby. Both teams, as clearly as Kansas City has dominated the 49ers, their challenges are not over. They've got Minnesota, then they've got Denver on a Monday night, and then they close at Seattle. And Seattle can be tough. I mean, Seattle, with the way Warren Moon's playing, that's not an easy deal. 
This one a little bit more on the easy side for Kansas City, Oakland at San Diego and New Orleans. You never know, though. I don't think Marty Schottenheimer is going to let this group have a letdown now because they can still win the division. Bumble. The ball's on the ground. His arm, I believe, was going forward, but no, 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 no. 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 Uh, that was a fumble. He was trying to avoid one of the tacklers. Yeah, you see, he starts on a waggle, so he's running out there, and his arm was going forward at first, mm -hmm. and then he brought it back. He stopped it and brought it back and really never got control of it when he gets hit. But as you see, he breaks it, brings it back, then he starts to put it up again, and he just gets leveled. And they have brought some pressure today on the 49er quarterbacks. Steve Young first, and now Jeff Brom. Now, old McDaniels put him flat on his back. There's Big Joe Phillips. Big Joe Phillips, an amazing guy, a nose tackle who is also a lawyer. Passed his bar in California and in Missouri. And has a wife who's a lawyer. Greg Hill. Well, they did stick some arrows in Steve Young. Yeah, we were talking in the in the pregame show about how you know this was going to be the big matchup, and how it was going to be these three guys in here against these two. And I'll have to say that these three guys won because if you look, 19 rushes inside for 67 yards and one touchdown. And then you, you know, you put that, you know, the pass protection that they did and their whole job, this whole offensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs was outstanding today. Billy Joe Tolliver is the chief quarterback. Greg Hill, the ball carrier. Greg Hill Tolliver, who was at Atlanta, has been around a little bit. Yeah, I remember this Billy. guy's a heck of an athlete. Yeah, I remember Billy Joe Tolliver in San Diego. Yep. He threw, as a high school baseball player, 14 no-hitters. He was the guy that, uh, when it was San Diego, we're talking about golf and what his handicap was. Yep. And he says, uh, what are we doing, bragging or betting? Because <laughs> you always carry two, one to brag about and one to bet with. He is from Boyd, Texas. 44 to 9. Is that right? Do I have any hickeys? I don't see anything. All on King of the Hill tonight on Fox. 44 to 9, Steve Young talking with Terrell Owens. I think, oh, Marty Schottenheimer got the bucket right in the face. You're, hey. supposed, to, you're supposed to sneak up behind him. And now, that's terrible bucket technique. And you're supposed to sneak up behind him and do it. And that's an early, early douse. Greg Hill. Side out of bounds. But that was Derek Thomas. I mean, he looked like he gave it a flush in the face. Well. And they got to work on that. I mean, if they're going to win championship games and go to Super Bowls and stuff, they got to work on their bucket throwing on because they didn't get any anything in the back. They got a little in the ears. That's good. You know, in the face, they got, got the glasses. His glasses yeah. But you got to get the back and down the neck and stuff like that. I wonder if Marty just turned into it. I wonder if Derek Thomas was trying to sneak up behind him. Did they start that? Uh, did you ever get a douse no, like that? No, no. They never had buckets like that when I was I was coaching. They, they, they had just an old, old regular bucket. Yeah, huh? yeah. It, it, was, it was the Giants is the first ones I remember doing With it. With Parcell. Yeah. Now, we didn't have a Gatorade barrel or anything like that. We had a dipper and a bucket. Yeah, but Derek Thomas, that was a poor one. I mean, that, yeah, I mean, that was... What it was is, is the, the technique was bad, but it probably started with poor organization. <laughs> probably didn't put a lot of time wow. in on his organization. A throw like that would have to start with poor organization. Yeah, but he played a heck of a game today. Did he he Derek Thomas, the 49ers couldn't block him. I mean, there was no way, and they, you know, they really didn't. They didn't put a double. They didn't put a back on him, and you know, and those kinds of things. But he was he was just too good and too quick for him, and. Eric Thomas is one of the the dominating one of the dominating defensive players in this league when he's healthy. Jeff Brown gives to Kirby. Do you think that conceivably the 
49ers weren't aware of how good Derek Thomas is? Oh, they had to be aware. I don't know that they thought he was fully healthy. Coming up, the NASDAQ stock market post-game report scores from around the league. Fox Sports ticker up to the second stats. So don't go away. See, Derek Thomas had had a torn tricep. Yeah. And, you know, there are torn biceps, which is the front muscle, and then the tricep is the back there. And you use the front to pull and the back to push. And when you don't have that tricep, it's hard to push. So he wasn't effective. And this is the first game that he played this year without a brace on that arm where he tore the tricep. So, so that gave him a lot more freedom. Kirby gets the carry and gets a 49er first down. Yes, Andre knows we're here. Andre Risen, he was telling us yesterday how he dreams of being great. I mean, he he feels that he belongs up there with the Jerry Rices and the Michael Irvins and those guys, but he felt maybe he was always on the wrong team. Well, today it's not a dream. Oh, no, he can play. Yeah. He was a basketball player. You know, he went to Michigan State. And he was a basketball player there. Marty Schottenheimer and congratulations to you and your staff. You did a heck of a job, Marty. Steve Mariucci doesn't look like he knew what hit him. Let's go right down now to Pam Oliver. All right, with Derek Thomas, and we hear so much about the 49ers defense, the 49ers defense, not today. Well, you know, uh, we read an article in the New York Times this week that said that uh, Derek Thomas and his defense could not play San Francisco's defense. Uh, but, you know, the heart and the guy, souls of the guys on my defense uh, they showed up today tell me how you were able to get so much pressure on Steve Young today we're talking four sacks 14 hurries I'm in my house you know it, it, there's, there's there's no question what happens when you're in my house you said uh, yesterday that nobody in the locker room is intimidated by the San Francisco 49ers well you know I think we showed that today we went out and uh, took the fight to them and as a result the score was uh, 44 to 9 was thank you we're going to talk to your roommate here brief roommate anyway Andre tell me about um, this game today what do you think about the way your offense came out and performed well you know coming into the game we knew what uh, we were playing a great defense you know San Francisco 49ers have a great team and we knew our backs would be up against the wall but we believe in ourselves and we believe in what we do and that's what we did today you said you've dreamed that you're always one of the best receivers in the game is that what you showed the world today to some degree <laughs> Well, I got, a gl I got a glimpse of the world's, you know, greatest, and that's Jerry Rice. And uh, hopefully one day I'll be mentioning the same name he is. All right, we'll check out that CD next summer, too. Let's go back up to Pat. Stand in three, baby! You keep... All right, Pam. This play of the game is brought to you by Energizer. Gonzalez, the only man rushing, by the way, blocked this punt. And this really... Took the game away from the 49ers. Not only did he block it, but he blocked it with one hand. Yeah. The final score here at Arrowhead Stadium is Kansas City 44, San Francisco 9. Coming up on the NASDAQ postgame report, we'll get you up to date on all the scores from around the league. Also, our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second stats. That's all next on the NASDAQ postgame report. Yeah. <laughs>